try to keep it entertaining, try to give, you know, something nice to look at. No one wants to look at me, so at least I can look at this stuff. So. <laughs> you a good-looking face. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're not so bad yourself. I, I like I like your haircut. I like how we coordinated that. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everyone. This is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today, I'm joined by John Swab, the writer and director, and Sam Corton, one of the stars of Candyland, which comes to select theaters and digital on January 6, 2023. We're going to talk to them right now. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. I'll spend a lot. Thank you. All right. So uh, thanks so much for joining me. This is J John Swab and Sam Corton, who are involved in Candyland. John Swab is the writer and director, and Sam Corton plays uh, the main character, Sadie, the main Good character? Probably good character in Canelan. It's coming to select theaters and digital on January 6, 2023. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, David, for having us. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Uh, so, you know, I guess the first question is for you, John. Um, I don't know. What, what inspired this film? I saw you're the writer and the director. Like, what uh, dark road trip inspired this? Or maybe just like a very interesting holly gathering. What kind of was the genesis for this movie? Uh, yeah, I mean, the movie was kind of born out of resentment. Uh, a little bit, you know, um, I, I don't find myself excited a lot about, you know, new movies that are coming out. I want to see movies that, you know, I saw when I was a kid and that excited me when I was younger. And uh, I'm into, you know, darker fare. And, uh, you know, I always thought a truck stop would be a good setting for a slasher film. Mm -hmm. And so um, over Christmas a few years ago, I wrote the script and a few months later we shot the movie. So. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I love that this did feel like a darker overall setting, but I think that there was also a lot of, there was a lot of like joy and kind of like touching moments, even though this was kind of a darker overall film. I think I, I kind of think of it more as like a horror slash drama because it did feel like there were some interesting, uh, I don't know, social uh, messages or at least social societal messages in this movie. So uh, did, was that also part of this or did, as you were creating these characters you just kind of think like well maybe they're a family maybe they are really looking out for each other how, how did that kind of intertwine in there um you know my kind of like the kind of mantra i had when i was writing it and then um you know as jeremy the producer and i and and sam and everybody started talking about it was i wanted it to be an x-rated john hughes movie mm -hmm. um and you know the thing i love about like the breakfast club for instance is you know everybody feels like they're in a family or they're a part of something uh, together. I didn't really have any idea. Uh, I wasn't trying to interject any societal messages or anything like that, but just really kind of make sure that everybody was, you know, felt connected and felt, um, you know, real and their relationships were real. So I'm glad that that came across. Yeah, and I guess that was probably my uh, a poor way for me to phrase it. Yeah, it wasn't like a societal message, but I liked that these felt like fleshed out people and their their connections and their desires and their wants were fleshed out in this film and they weren't just kind of like throwaway fodder that you might see in some horror films sure um, sure and sam i guess how did you get involved in this film did you were you involved early on or kind of once the script came out did it come across your desk and you thought this is this is a, a very interesting role for me to play no well i'm married to john and we were home at christmas i remember when he was writing because i didn't see him for like two <laughs> weeks that christmas but i knew i could tell he was having fun and it was uh and then he showed me the first draft um so that was like the quickest I'd ever seen him write a script. So that was exciting. Um, and yeah, I read it and was like, I'll play anything. This is awesome. I just had so much fun reading it. And uh, now, and it was pretty, it was only, it wasn't last year's, was the year before. So it was only two Christmases ago he wrote it. Um, and getting to see that, in a, we got to screen it in LA last, a uh, couple weeks ago. And um it's still fun. It, it was it was more fun uh, getting to watch it with a bunch of people. So, right. But I, I've worked with John and Jeremy a bunch. I, I have so much respect for them, and I, I'm really down to do anything they're a part of. So, that's awesome. Did did he make you still audition for uh for the role of Sadie, or did you just kind of like get to pick and choose which role you wanted to play? No, but I have auditioned for other parts in his films that like they need a name for, and I'm like. I'm going to show you I can do this and I'll tape and I'll send it to him and Jeremy and they debate. And then usually they end up still needing a name, but we've uh, auditioned <laughs> the opening scene a few times. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, yeah. that's method acting, right? Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> uh, so, you know what, I think one of the main characters, you know, characters in this film is 
the the truck stop like where did you find this place it's kind of like it has this beautiful kind of mountain surrounding but it is out in the middle of nowhere did you did yeah you that was like just that's like the film gods man giving us a gift i mean jeremy and i we were in oklahoma where we planned to film this originally and then um some things happened with the rebate there so we had to pivot and uh jeremy had a relationship with um the film commissioner in montana so we drove up there blind and just kind of started scouting and driving around and uh kind of unintentionally drove around this bend and there's this beautiful truck stop and then like right you know before the immigrant peaks in in montana and uh it was kind of just like I, I, it was amazing it was like oh wow this is exactly what i've been looking for you know, once we found the truck stop then I kind of went back and reverse engineered the script a little bit to what the truck stop had. And uh, it was, it was, uh, you know, like I said, a real blessing. This whole movie was, was kind of um, charmed in a way, you know, from the start. So that's, that's awesome to hear. And that definitely feels like, you know, everything kind of came together. That truck stop was perfect. Uh, I love the cast. I love how the cast came together. Did you, were you able to kind of, spend some time together to build this this family feel with the group or i know indie films always have no budget and no time so did you just kind of like get in there and go and everything just kind of happened organically while you were filming well luckily the cast um for the most part all knew each other yeah most um, of us had worked together before like me and eden got to uh, bond on another film we had done called tiger tiger and uh and then me and Owen had worked together on John and Jeremy's other film, Body Brokers. So we had all known each other. Olivia um, was new to the mix, but she's like such a pro. She was there and in like a day, everyone was hanging out. And we still, we had a few days before we started where everybody was hanging out, um, kind of quickly getting to know each other. But I remember when they drove us to the truck stop, it, that was really exciting because it was like, okay, this is, you know, our environment. I remember when John... Uh, found it and sent a video and he's like i found it uh it was exciting and i, I love that because you know well, you, you kind of had this picture in your head when you're reading the script or when you're writing the script but then when you get to see it in person like it just becomes yeah. it, was that what you were look, expecting or did it just become like more real when you saw that truck stop and you're like okay we're really gonna do this i mean uh locations like you know my job as a director i feel like you know uh, most of it is comprised of finding the right locations for the actors to exist in and to to act in and then also helping them find their wardrobe that they feel comfortable in so kind of just giving creating environment and then like you know a, a uniform for them to mm -hmm. kind of play off of so for me locations are like they're like i get the most excited about that because once i see the location then i see the movie and so when i went into that truck stop for the first time um yeah it was like I, jeremy was with me I think I went alone and then I drove Jeremy out there and, you know, it, it was a, it was a tough process getting this movie made. It was, it was really hard. And uh, we, we went through a lot, Jeremy and I trying to get it off the ground. So when I got to take him there and walk him through it and see him finally smile and be like, wow, like this is, I, I see it. This is amazing. Like, I, I can't believe we're, we found it and this is happening. Um, yeah. The movie felt that much more real. So that's um, awesome. I think that, that, also because it was live active truck stop. It wasn't a set, you know, it, there's truckers coming in and out all the time. So it was great, I think, to be able to pull, like they love to pull real people in whenever they can uh, to like, you know, give it that real sense, which is cool. That's awesome. Because yeah, you're, just, you're a trucker, you're doing your job and they're like, hey, you want to be a movie? You're like, yeah, sure. Why not? Like, I'll take, I'll take 20, 30 minutes to take a shot. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I know we have very limited time, so I'm going to switch. I call it the lightning round. They're just lightweight questions about the film. I want to see how your personal experiences map to things that happen in the film. You can feel free not to answer any of them. I will not be offended, but I try to keep them very answerable. First question is, there is a group of people in this film that are trying to save the residents of Candyland. Uh, has anyone ever tried to save you? I don't know, like a like a, someone knocking on your door trying to, to preach or maybe stopping you on, on a trip? I live in Oklahoma, so almost daily. <laughs> yeah. Uh, has it worked? <laughs> I I don't think anybody would say it has. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still have a big dildo in a brown paper bag, you know, so uh, like, uh, like Sheriff Rex. So. Well, that's, you know, props, right? You had to get all those props for the film. Those are... Those are... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> Ooh, that line about this being uh, not clean is 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 even more uh, it's even more visceral right now. So yeah. I I think that John actually just made a movie that he wanted to piss off all of his relatives that are pretty buttoned up down here in Oklahoma. I think there's a little bit of that too. So. I, you know what? Whatever it takes to get the art made, right? That's uh, whatever the motivation is. As long as it comes out on screen, that's all that matters. <laughs> oh, I think it's good too to get uncomfortable. And I, you know, it was what was so cool about watching it live with people. You really got to see people go, oh, uh, like freak out during certain things. I think that's healthy, you know. To yeah, and it's you know, I I, I liked that as well. It kind of it's a very different movie, but it has a similar kind of feel to the X, which came out last year. Um, you know, just a little bit more on the exploitative side, but also like a throwback to some classic horror tropes and kind of a classic horror feel to it. So I think that that was, that was a good choice to kind of go a little more extreme just to kind of get people uncomfortable. And then you can kind of tell the story around it. Uh, next question is when was the last time you played Candyland the board game? Uh, <laughs> 20, 30, 30 years ago. I don't know. Enough for a bit. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I I was I had to like Google. As I remember, like that this was actually like a game at some point, right? Just to make sure that it actually was. And yep, there we go. So yeah, now now when you go okay to land, you'll have two very very different results based on your search history. Um, That's right. This film had uh, snowballs as like a go-to snack food. Uh, do you have like a go-to snack food uh, either for road trips or just when you're when you're just needing something sweet? I'm chocolate. I just anything chocolate I'm into. Cookies, cake, any sweets. I'll eat anything. Perfect. <laughs> That's easy to please. Um. This play, this movie takes place at like a truck stop slash gas station. What was the last thing that you bought at a gas station? Gas. Yeah, same. A very expensive gas, although it's coming down, thankfully. But yeah, very expensive gas, probably. Um, this movie also has some horrible discoveries in a bathroom. What is the worst thing that you found in a bathroom? Diarrhea all over the place. Hopefully this was a this was like a public bathroom, not not your personal bathroom. But hey, you know what? Not in my house. No, at a, at a truck stop. I've never found anything surprising. Just the usual. Usually, you just expect to find something terrible, and, and it's perfectly fine. Is yeah, that, I've never found a dead body or like a finger, or nothing crazy. Yeah. Well, maybe the for next time you do find something, then you can go and write a, a script in like two weeks and get something made. Yeah. Um, and the last question is uh, the film there's a lot of the film where something terrible is under someone's bed what is under your bed right now dog hair yeah that's it a lot of it yeah uh no dog just the hair just the hair yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome and so the the film is candy Land. it comes out uh in select theaters and on digital on january 6 2023 uh you can check it out then um I know you all are out promoting the film, trying to get uh, the word out. Uh, but after you, this film is out, after people see it, what can people look forward to next? Uh, John and, and Sam, do you have any upcoming projects? I play a band called The Bobby Lees, and we just put a record out in the fall. So we're going to be touring that. Uh, we're going to Europe again, and we're doing a full U.S. tour in the spring. So you can go to thebobbylees.com to check it out. And I got a movie called Little Dixie that Jeremy and I did that comes out February 3rd. Oh, wow. Perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, back back to back movies and, and, a, and a European tour. That's amazing. That's right. Very busy 2023. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, the film is Candy Lane. Like I said, it's in select theaters and on digital on January 6, 2023. This is John Suave and Sam Corton. Thank you. So, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, David. Nice night. to meet you. Awesome. Take care. That was John Swab and Sam Corden of Candyland, which is coming to select theaters and digital on January 6, 2023. It is an interesting cult-style horror film that has a very simple setup and a great cast, one of whom you just heard from now. If you liked this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Yeah.